Good morning and welcome. You are worshiping with Horseshoe Drive United Methodist Church. Today is Sunday, January 24th, 2021, and we are here to worship. So sit back, relax. If you're in place in your pew, get comfortable. If you're at home, take a deep breath and get ready. Shut out what's around you. What Shut out the noise, the people down the pew, the people in the next room, and just focus this time that God has created for you. Focus this time and this space for your worship of our one true Lord. Amen.
Let us pray together. Almighty and holy God, we, we are so truly grateful to be here today. We are grateful to receive your grace. No matter what our sin, we are forgiven. Your grace abounds within us, leads us, and helps us move forward in this life. Your grace means so much more than just your pardon. Your grace is the lifeblood that moves us into your world as your hands and feet and vo voice. And Lord, we thank you. Thank you for the ways that you use us. And we may not always listen and we may not always hear you and we may not always do as you ask, Lord. Yet still, we have your grace. We receive your grace and it fills us, Lord, so we ask you to allow your and grace today to empower us. Empower us to listen, empower us to hear, and empower us to respond and make the changes necessary to be the people you created us to be, to be the church you created us to be. Dear Lord, thank you for this wonderful opportunity of grace and of change. We pray this today in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand for the gospel reading. The gospel reading comes from Mark 1, 14 through 20. After John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee announcing God's good news, saying, Now is the time. Here comes God's kingdom. Change your hearts and lives and trust this good news. As Jesus passed alongside the Galilee Sea, he saw two brothers, Simon and Andrew, throwing fishing nets into the sea. They were fishermen. Come, follow me, he said, and I'll show you how to fish for people. Right away, they left their nets and followed him. After going a little farther, he saw James and John, Zebedee's sons, in their boat repairing the fishing nets. At that very moment, he called them. They followed him, leaving their father, Zebedee, in the boat with the hired workers. scripture of the Old Testament today comes from the book of Jonah chapter 3. The Lord's word came to Jonah a second time. Get up and go to Nineveh, that great city, and declare against it the proclamation that I am commanding you. And Jonah got up and went to Nineveh according to the Lord's word. Now Nineveh was indeed an enormous city, a three days walk across. Jonah started into the city walking one day and cried out, Just 40 more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast and put on mourning clothes from the greatest of them to the least significant. God saw what they were doing, that they had ceased their evil behavior. So God stopped planning to destroy them and he didn't do it. 
the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Pray with me. Even when we don't hear you, Lord, you give us one more chance, two more chances, three more chances. Even when we run away, Lord, you still come after us and pull us back in. This is your grace complete. Lord, help us listen today. Keep our hearts and minds open to the word you are speaking to us and to your present moving among us. And Lord, though I'm not worthy to speak for you, I ask that you use me as the vessel through which others hear you speak. In the name of our one true God, amen. We have two contrasting call stories again today. We have the story of Jesus calling James and John. The fishermen said, I will make you fish for people. And Jesus said, come and follow. And they just ran and said, yes, we'll go. We'll give everything up. We'll come and we'll follow you. Then we go back to the Old Testament. We have the story of Jonah. Now, in our story today, beginning at chapter 3, Jonah says yes to God. But if we back it up, if you're familiar with the story of Jonah, and that's okay if you're not, if we back it up, God called Jonah to be a prophet to give this message to Nineveh that it would be destroyed. And Jonah said no. Jonah said no so fast and so quickly. He said, I'm getting as far away as I can. And he got on a boat to sail far away. He got on the boat and there's a big storm came. And the people on the boat were upset and they were scared. And they said, who caused this storm? Who did this to us? And Jonah said, yeah, it was me. I'm running away from God. So Jonah said, here's what you do. Throw me off the boat. If, if you're that scared, the storm is so bad, throw me off the boat. So they did. And, of course, if you know the story next, a really big fish squall, swallowed Jonah. A big fish swallowed Jonah. And there Jonah was in the belly of this big fish going, how much worse can my life get? <laughs> so he prayed to God and said, look, God, if you get me out of this fish, okay, I'll do what you need me to do. So the fish spit out Jonah. And we come to our passage today where God said again, Jonah, go to Nineveh and give them the message I gave you. And he does. And he tells the people of Nineveh, he tells the people of Nineveh, 40 more days. You've got 40 days and God will destroy you for your sinfulness. And for this reason, this moment, this time, the people of Nineveh, they heard God. They heard God, they put on mourning clothes, they put on sackcloth and ashes, and they mourned and they fasted, and they repented of their sins. And God said, that, great, that's all I wanted, that's all I needed, you're safe now. You're safe now. As the story goes on, and I encourage you to read Jonah, it's only four chapters, it's a very easy to read. Jonah's still not a perfect follower of God after that, because right after that, Jonah gets mad at God. Wait a minute. <laughs> You said you were going to destroy them, now destroy them. <laughs> but God went on to handle Jonah yet again in a different way. Because you see, God doesn't forget us. God calls us like God called the disciples and said, come and follow and amazing things will happen. And sometimes we listen and sometimes we respond and we're like, great, this is going to be fun. And sometimes we say, not today, I'm busy. But the call keeps coming. And the call isn't always an easy one. Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh. He didn't want to tell them he was going to destroy them. Like Samuel last week, giving the message to, to Eli that Eli would be destroyed. And Samuel didn't want to do it, but Eli said, you've got to tell him the truth. You've got to tell me the truth. Tell me what God said. In the same way, the people of Nineveh, heard what God had said. They heard and they changed their ways. They knew, they knew they couldn't keep doing what they wanted to do. But Jonah didn't know that. He just knew he had a bad message to give. He knew he had to tell someone something they didn't want to hear, and he didn't know how they were going to react. And oftentimes when God calls us, it's not for, to harm us or to hurt us, but the call is to make a change. The call is for us to make a change in our lives. And I think God's been calling us, and I'm not just talking about us here at Horseshoe Drive or us as United Methodists or us as um, American Christians. God has been calling Christians for a long time now. Probably 50, 60 years, I think probably more than that, if we look at it. God's been saying the world is changing the world is changing, 
and I need you to change. And we're sitting here, and you're wearing your mask, and you're thinking, well, we've changed. <laughs> we've changed a lot. But way before all this started, almost a year ago, God had been trying to get our attention about the church and letting us know things were changing. And you've heard all these changes. We, you've heard about smaller numbers in worship. You've dealt with that. How are we going to fix that? Our congregations are getting older and they're not getting younger. How are we going to fix that? We're not getting new people in. How are we going to fix that? And so we kept struggling and striving and saying, okay, we'll do this, we'll try this, we'll do this, we'll do this, we'll do this. And the problems continue. And the problems continue. See, God's been trying to get our attention and get us to refocus. And we've been working hard to do what we want to do. You see, it's human nature to do what you want to do, what works for you, what makes you comfortable. And God doesn't always ask us. In fact, God rarely asks us to do what makes us comfortable. God gives us the power, gives us the strength, gives us the ability to do things that we can do. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, without a doubt, God is with us in whatever God asks us to do. But it's not always going to make us comfortable. It's not always going to be easy. And we've been trying since I've been in ministry, this is my 16th year since I've been in full-time ministry. Before that, when I was in the church, we've been doing the same thing that we know to do. And not getting the results we wanted we keep hitting that brick wall thinking if I just try harder next time I run into that brick wall it's not going to hurt so much but this isn't Harry Potter and the wall is not going to change and if you don't know that reference ask someone in your life who's younger than you and they'll understand that reference but we keep hitting that brick wall and we, we're still in the same boat and then now we've gotten a pandemic and now we we definitely have less in worship because we can't even gather. So how do we continue to adapt to that? Because again, this isn't a new normal. This is now our normal. So how do we continue to adapt? Well, first we do what Jonah did. Now Jonah had to get swallowed up by a really big fish and to be sitting, being digested in the belly of a fish, which I'm sure wasn't very comfortable or pleasant, before Jonah said, okay, God, I'm sorry. What do I need to do? What do I need to do? So the first thing we need to do is turn back to God, which isn't as hard as it sounds. It doesn't mean... You have to fall on yourselves and say, knees and say, I'm a terrible sinner. I mean, that helps. Forgive me, Lord, what can I do? Because we have God's grace. God's grace is already with us. God's forgiveness is with us. God won't destroy us because we have Jesus Christ, God sent God's son. So we won't continue to be broken. So we wouldn't have to be destroyed. So what we need to do is get back to the things we know. We need to read our Bibles. We need to pray in a deeper way sometimes. We need to sit quietly and listen, which is the hardest thing for us to do. Some people do it great, and some people can't sit for 30 seconds without going crazy. We need to learn to practice to do that. We need to worship fully. And it can be in here, it can be online, it can be in some other way, but we need to immerse ourselves in worship. Which for many of us, we don't know what that really means. Because our tradition has been, I stand up here and talk at you and you listen and then you go home and worship is done. So how do you immerse yourself in worship? How do you participate in worship? Even sitting in the pew or sitting at home. Because at home you've got all those other distractions. There's other things to do. How do you participate fully in worship? 
And in our call to worship, it said God calls us to mission in the world. And God does call us to mission in the world. And that's a different way. How do we do that in a new way? We don't do it in here. We don't do it in room seven or in the chapel or in any of these other buildings. We do mission in the world in the world. We worship in the world. We take our message to God into the world. God's been trying to get our attention. God wants us. God needs us to reach people with a gospel message. Somebody reached us. Somebody reached us, and I guarantee it was easier when we were younger. Because the churches were full, and you grew the church by having more babies. And as I've told many of our church women, just have more babies. <laughs> yeah, I get that same reaction every time. It doesn't work that way anymore, because we're, we're in a different world now. We're in a different world now, and people don't come here automatically, and people don't want to spend all Sunday in church. They don't even want to come to church on Sunday. Because sometimes that's their only day of a week with a family, and we used to say, come to church. And some of you remember, we spent all day at church. We had night church. Who remembers having night church, too, and afternoon church, and youth church? It was all day. But even then, we said, no, no, I don't want to go back at night. Or I don't want to be there all day, so we adapted, and that's okay. That's okay. Sometimes we have to adapt because you've got to reach the people where they are. But what we've been doing for the last 20, 30 years, 40 years, is doing this wonderful Christian thing. <laughs> but you're supposed to be here on Sunday. And you're supposed to come and do this, and you're supposed to do this. And the more we've done this, the fewer people we've had. And we get outraged. Well, now they do go to the ball fields on Sunday morning to the soccer fields. How dare they? We shook that finger instead of saying, well, why don't we go out there and meet them? Take church to them in some form or fashion. Because you see, then this is church. You see, we think this is worship. We think we have to have all this to have worship. We think we'd have to push Debbie and the grand piano out to the field <laughs> to have church. That's what we love. That's what we like. And we're going to keep having that. We don't have to give that up. But we have to be willing to say, why don't we do something different? Go where the people are. I have some thoughts on that. Some things may work. Some things may not. You might have some thoughts on that. And I can guarantee the pandemic now has messed it up, but it's not going away, so we have to figure out how to work into that. But we're already changing. We have a church council meeting tomorrow evening, which if you know or don't know, anyone can come onto that Zoom and participate in our church council meeting, find out what's going on. And we tried a few times to have our meetings in person and online for people who wanted to stay home, and it just... It's easier to stay at home. It's easier to stay at home and just turn on that computer and be there and listen than sometimes driving here, stopping what you're doing, driving here, and then being here and then driving back again. But sometimes it's easier to be in person and we need to be in person, so we're going to have to learn to balance both. Sometimes we need to see each other face to face to make decisions. And sometimes we can just stay at home and do it, and we're going to have to learn to balance both. Some people, some people are in that phone. I know that's not where they really are. <laughs> Some of you are in this phone. <laughs> Some of you are at home worshiping and are going to stay at home worshiping. We have people worshiping in us with us who don't live in the state. We have people who are tuning in who have never heard of us before. And they're still going to be there and we're still going to be offering worship to them, to you, as much as to each other here. We're already adapting, we're already changing, we're already facing a new world in ways we never thought we would. And God has put us on this path. Yes, things spread up. Changes have been happening for over 50 years, and we've kind of like, oh, we'll get to that. 
Things sped up. The world got faster, if you can believe it. The world got faster. And the church is now spinning to keep up. You see, it used to be back in the day, the church moved slower. The church moved slower. And when I came out of the news media, working every day, doing a newscast fast and furious every day, and then came into the church, it was like a culture shock. You mean I can't yell at people and tell them what to do and they go and do it? It doesn't work that way anymore? It's like, no, you have to be nice to them. You have to encourage them. You have to say you're wonderful. You're wonderful. It's true. So they know. They know it's not true. No, it is true. (laughs) But the church, it's nice to move a little slower. But we can't keep lagging so far behind. So technology is a part of worship now, part of church. Getting out of this beautiful facility and not using it all as much. We'll find purpose for it. Don't think we're going to waste any of it. And getting out and being church in the world. And here's something crazy. Telling people if you worship on a Tuesday night or you take part in a mission on a Saturday morning, you've come to church and you get to check that box for the week. (laughs) Instead of saying, you got to be here Sunday morning and sit in the pew and dress nice and look right and that only counts. You've got to suffer like we suffer and then, then it's okay, no. And that frees some of you up here and some of you there. If you like to sleep in on Sunday morning, our worship service is recorded and you can watch it on a Tuesday night or a Wednesday afternoon or whenever you get around to it, but you have to watch it and I'm talking to you at home. You have to watch it. Because that's another side to this. When we adapt God to our schedule, sometimes we miss God. We forget about God. We do other things, which is a little different than Jonah. Jonah was intentionally running away, which we do that too. But sometimes we run away by just ignoring are getting caught up in our lives and being busy and doing all the things that the world calls us to do because the world calls us to do a lot. So that's where it comes up to us. It comes up to us. You see, it was Jonah sitting in the belly of the fish who finally said, all right, God, I'm sorry. Let me, how, what can I do? And it's up to us because we're grown-ups. Not everyone in here is a grown-up. And if you're not a grown-up, your parents get to tell you what to do. I can't fix that. But if you are a grown-up, this is up to you. Your faith life, your Christian journey, following up on your baptism and living into that every day, that is on you. That is on you. So if you want to forget about it and never pick up a Bible, that's okay. If you want to pray, just those immediate prays, Lord, give me a parking space. God's not going to leave you. If you want to claim you're worshiping at home, but watch something on TV while the church service is playing in the corner, I know you're doing it. (laughs) Something else. Or you put the church on the TV, and then at the home, no one's watching you, so you can get your phone out and play games or something. It's up to you. Your faith life is up to you. We can offer opportunities, and we are going to offer opportunities, and we're going to offer ways to connect, and we're going to offer you chances for mission and chances for for reaching out to each other and chances for worshiping in different ways. We're going to offer you all these opportunities, but I can't force you to do it. I can only encourage you and ask you and pray for you, but we're all grown-ups including pastors, and sometimes we have to put things down and say, oh yeah, I should probably pray now. Or I need to read the Bible a little bit more than I have been. It all falls on all of us. We have to make that choice for ourselves. Because if we don't make that choice for ourselves, we can't get anyone else to make that choice. 
If we're not the examples of Jesus Christ, the world can't see Jesus Christ. We can't tell them, oh, it's a mystery. Oh, we can't see him, but we believe. That doesn't sell anymore. They need to see Jesus in us. They need to hear our stories. They need to know us as people. No, we're not perfect. No, we fail and run away from God just as much as anybody else. But they need to see Jesus in us. And for them to see Jesus in us, we have to actively connect to the Jesus that's within us. And that takes time, and that takes energy, and that takes work. And I can guarantee sometimes God will tell you something wonderful, and you're like, yes, let's go. And sometimes God will say, do this first. And you're like, nah. But together... When we work together, even if we're separated by technology, when we work together as the church, the body of Christ that God created for us, we lift each other, support, support each other, we listen to each other, we learn from each other, we grow together. And when we are steeped in our faith and we are doing our best to live out our faith, then we're really ready to engage the world as God would have us do. It's not about going and doing and running just to go and do and run. It's about being intentional about my faith, intentional about your faith, and intentional about taking our faith in new and creative ways into the world. God's been trying to get our attention. God has been trying to get our attention, and it took a virus, I think, to really knock us down and say, wait, <laughs> this is the time to focus, to refocus and get us back. Because the vaccine's out there and things are changing already. We're still in this world and it's been almost a full year, but that 10 months, that went fast, didn't it? And even if we're in this for another year or so, that'll go fast. So we've got to be working ahead, planning ahead. We can't lag behind anymore. We can't go so slow that we've stopped moving. We can't go so slow that we end up in the belly of the fish. Or so lost in the storm we have to ask people to throw us out. We've got to be like Jonah and say, okay, finally, I'm going to listen. I'm going to do what you asked me to do. I'm going to try to do it differently, and it's going to hurt sometimes, and it's going to be difficult, but sometimes it's going to be glorious. And if I don't try the difficult, I'll never get to the glorious. So in the coming weeks, we'll talk about those ways that God has been trying to get our attention. And then when we get into Lent, because life is moving fast and Lent is almost here, <laughs> we're going to talk about discipleship in our spiritual life and how, how we can be better disciples before we go and make disciples. And after that, we have more to do. But that's okay. That's okay. Because God still had a purpose for Jonah, even when Jonah got mad about it. And God had a purpose for Nineveh, even when Nineveh was set to be destroyed. And they recognized that they weren't listening to God and said, I'm sorry, God, what can we do? And God said, all right, I'm going to work with you now. We're not in the shape of Nineveh. We're not even in the shape of Jonah. I think we're in much better shape than that. But we still have to listen and we still have to work. And we still have to let go of some of the things that we want for the sake of the gospel. We have to give up what makes us comfortable for the sake of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus is great if it's just about you and me and Jesus. But Jesus came into the world to build up the kingdom of God. Jesus came into the world so that all God's children could be redeemed. And we still have a role to play in that. So let's do it. Let's get out of the fish. Let's get out of the storm. Let's live into whatever God has in store and allow ourselves to be transformed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm going to ask you to stay seated. I want you to just, we're going to sing, change my heart, oh God, and I want you to sing it prayerfully. Let this be the prayer from your heart. Let this be how you interact most closely with God this day.
Change my heart, oh God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, oh God. May I be like you. Please rise for our Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to be seated. We're entering into this time of prayer. First, let me say, this entire time, 45, 50 minutes, whatever it is, is prayer. All of our actions, our songs, our prayers, the scriptures, how we incorporate the word into our lives is prayer. So all we do is prayer. That's the glory of prayer. But this is the time that's called the prayer of the people. So this is not about me going on. And y'all have heard enough of believe me, y'all have heard enough of me today. This is about the prayers of the people. So whether or not you call out a prayer out loud or say it in your heart, that's good. Whether you're at home and you want to type in your prayer request on, online, that's okay. That's wonderful. It is your prayer to God. However you want that prayer to come forward, God is listening not about me calling out a name are you calling out a name it's about you talking to God so whether you're at home or whether you're here with us I want you as we open into this prayer time if we have a time of silence call out your prayer request out loud if you're sitting at home alone call it out if you're in here shout it out if you want to or say it quietly in it's not about taking names or making your own list it's not about drifting away to something else it's about immersing ourselves in prayer and we're going to try different ways of doing this in the coming weeks and months different ways of guiding you through prayer but today I just want you to sit and be in prayer and whatever works within your heart and soul be in prayer with your one true God let us pray dear Lord you have so much for us. You call us every day, and sometimes that makes us fearful. What do you want? And it's okay, Lord. You know it's okay if we say, what now, God? What? Or if we say, I'm here, Lord. Let me be your servant. 
So Lord, as we open ourselves to you, as we open ourselves to this time of prayer, to be in a communication in any way that's comfortable for us, that works for us, that works for you, let us be in that prayer. And Lord, here at this time, hear all of our prayers lifted to you. Lord, my heart calls out today for those who are scared, who are lonely, who are hurting. And so we pray together now the prayer that our Lord taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven. And as we make our offering prayer, I ask everyone to hold your hands up in a place of receiving. That's why preachers hold their hands up sometimes. It's a prayer position, a place of receiving. We're going to say our offering prayer, and I'm going to ask you to keep your eyes open, and it's going to be hard. But I want you to keep your eyes open. Dear Lord, as we make this offering to you of ourselves, it's not just the money we give. We give ourselves, our hearts, our spirits, our bodies, we give to you, Lord, and we give you our gifts as well to return a portion to you as you have asked. We ask your blessing on all of these offerings. We ask your blessings that we offer more of ourselves as we can, as we truly become your disciples and your people, Lord. And take these offerings in whatever form they come and use them for your people and your world. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy
life be filled with joy and may the road you travel always lead you home and may the road you travel always lead you home and may the road you travel God has something to say for, uh, to us. God has something for us to do. And we can do it. We can run and not be weary. We can say, yes, Lord, I'm here. We can even say, what now, Lord, what now? But as long as we support each other and get each other up, and as long as we become our best disciples, the best disciples we can be, then we can go out and spread the gospel in ways that God would have us do it, in ways we never imagined possible and what a glory and a joy that would be yes amen amen Amen. go today in peace go in love and go say yes god i'm ready amen